Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Hello, and welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I'm your guest host, Lisa Finkel. On January 26th, 27th, and 28th, the first uh, that we know of, virtual online cat conference took place with a number of amazing speakers and participants from the U.S. and beyond. It was a pretty amazing event. And your Community Cats podcast host, Stacey LeBaron, was at the center of it all. So today we're going to ask Stacey all about the conference, how it came together, and what her plans are for the future. Also with us today is Kristen Petrie, our re- resident technical cat, to talk about how the technology worked to allow people to connect from everywhere. Stacy, welcome to your own show, and Kristen, welcome too. Thank you. Thank you. So, Stacy, like so many of the things that you've done that I've asked you, uh, I need to know, when did you get the idea for the conference? What triggered it in your mind? So I guess with the podcast, when I started that up, I always thought that a, a conference would be super great to do online. I feel very, very strongly that we need a dedicated national cat conference. I've always wanted us to have an annual conference to really focus on the many different topics that impact cats in, in communities. Pets March Charities did one quite a few years ago, and I thought it was Probably one of the highlights of my career going to that conference. I felt it was very educational, exciting. Lots of connections were made. Unfortunately, I didn't feel like I really had the the bandwidth or the capabilities to put on a physical national conference. And I felt like a virtual conference was something that I could pull off and with the support of, of my team. And I also thought it was a great way to provide access to the conference for folks that wouldn't be able to afford to fly and pay for a hotel room, pay a conference fee, as well as pay for pet sitters or cat sitters. So I just really wanted to make sure there was something accessible to folks. And I felt I was doing webinars. So I felt, well, a conference is just kind of a super extra long webinar. That's a good way to think about it. So uh, (laughs) what was your thought process in deciding to move forward. And and you kind of already touched on what you were trying to accomplish, that sense of scope of different, uh, many different speakers covering all the different issues relating to cats, both owned and community. Yeah, well, I actually, I've referenced it quite a few times with, with folks of saying, I'm sort of throwing the spaghetti against the wall and just sort of wanted to see what, what sort of stuck with folks, because I really didn't have specific themes in mind. Other than I really felt it was important to have an international exposure because that's the beauty of technology. It's the ability for us to be able to to reach to different parts of the world and really create this as a, as a global issue. I would say one other instrumental component is... I would say last fall, Kristen and I had a phone call and I said, I can't do this without you. (laughs) And she said, well, I'm all in. And when she said that, I said, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) Oh, that makes me awfully happy. I remember that call though. Oh, and I remember the email after saying, I'm so excited about this. I was like, all right, let's go. I'm I'm surprised you didn't send an email back, Kristen saying, I just don't know what I got myself into. (laughs) It's always fine. It's going to be fine. It's totally going to be fine. (laughs) So what was the hardest challenge of all of this? Was it corralling the technology? Was it getting your speakers? Was it getting sponsors for the event? So for this time around, I would say having faith in the technology was, for me, my greatest challenge. I mean, I I believed in the GoToWebinar platform that we used. I felt sure that it would pull through for us and that we would be able to work well with it. But yet, you never know. You know, you just never know. And you had, we had visions. I had visions of my computer melting down that day. I, I, when I did some practice runs, my computer was getting really hot. And so I was emailing Kristen and I was like, how do you cool down your computer? You know, (laughs) after being up and running, you know, she's like, well, you can put ice packs and put it up on a stand so they get air underneath your, your laptop and stuff like that. So I really just had nervousness 
this about, you know, my computer crashing or the technology having some problem. And, um, that it was great knowing that I had Kristen as the backup there and she had two computers running. So I think that we were, we were covered, um, but yet we'd never done it before. And so I, I kind of figured, well, the worst comes to worst is we just refund everybody their money, you know? So Kristen, what was it like sitting with two computers basically for the entire weekend? What challenges did you face or what, what were your biggest concerns or fears? Um, well, I, I always have a, a fear of secretary's spread and my butt getting a little bit bigger, but <laughs> I, I, I was saying a little earlier, like I always kind of brace myself for, for confrontation because I expect there's going to be problems. Um, and it's my job to fix them because Stacy's got other stuff to do. So I was logged in as a organizer and a participant all weekend. So I could see what everybody else was seeing and I could see what, uh, Stacy was seeing. And we had remarkably few issues. There was a couple, you know, little things, but for the most part, everybody could, could log in. We did prepare though. Um, all the speakers, except for one, I think did a dry run with us ahead of time. Um, the whole week before we kind of shut down everything else and we're like, all right, like let's practice this. So we had everybody run through it and we kind of addressed any issues that there might be, made sure that their sound works and made sure that they knew how to, when we threw the screen to them, what they needed to have up. And uh, we did a lot of, we did a lot of stuff on the fly too. I was doing all the slides for in between the beakers as we were talking. And uh, that's how we got some of the cute pictures of, of people watching the webinars with their, with their kitties, which was adorable. And I love that we got to do that. <laughs> so it's, it's always, it's always a little stressful. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, you could have a power outage or solar flare or something, you know, that you hadn't even dreamed was going to be a problem, but you no, know, it, it went smoothly. And I, I was actually really surprised how smoothly it went. <laughs> I, I, I do have to say that that was such a nice touch between the speakers to have those pictures. It was just, you know, just really you guys uh, handled so many little details to make it truly feel like an online event as opposed to just sort of a series of slide presentations. So I mentioned getting sponsors, Stacy, and so I thought maybe you could just remind us who your sponsors were who really helped you make this happen. Oh, yes. We had the International Cat Association as well as Feline Fix by Five were our two leadership sponsors, which was fantastic. I mean, here is this brand new event, never been done before. You know, two people could show up. It could have been, you know, Kristen, me. You, Lisa, and, and another person, <laughs> Julie Jacobson, who runs our grant program. It could have been f just the four of us for the weekend. So, you know, they really took a, a leap of faith and believe in the, the concept. And I'm so happy that they supported us and am grateful and thankful. And I hope they'll participate again next year. And then we also on Friday night, we had a special sponsor of Triple T Studios and they were great to participate as a sponsor. And one of the other highlights of the weekend was, uh, and little did we know, because this was something we almost did on the fly, I would say like five days beforehand, we were like, oh, we're going to do raffles. And I'm like, well, how do you do a raffle on a virtual conference? It's not like we can put numbers in a hat or something. <laughs> and so Kristen's like, well, let's do cat trivia. So we ended up doing the cat trivia, which ended up being hugely successful. And we had Kensington Publishers, Sandy Reese, one of our speakers, Cats Rule, Humane Society of Stanislaus, and the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society all contributed prizes for the cat trivia. And I think we'll certainly expand on that um, next year because uh, it was really popular and I think everybody had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It was, it, again, it was just one of those little things you added in that made it really seem um, so cohesive. Are you new to the Community Cats podcast? Don't know what to listen to first? Feel free to check out the listening module tab where we have grouped shows together by topic so you can listen to a bunch of shows around the same topic. Just click on the listening module tab at www.communitycatspodcast.com and enjoy learning about community cats. <coughs> have you spoken with your vet about the Feline Fix by Five Months campaign? Fix by Five is a program to raise awareness about the importance of getting kittens fixed before they are five months old in order to prevent unplanned litters. Fix by Five has now been endorsed by all the major national veterinary organizations. We urge you now to make sure that your vet has this information and is able to share it with clients. To get the full story, check out Fix by Five Months' website. 
Google Fix by Five to get all the information. Again, Google Fix by Five for free vet info packets, media kits, articles, and more. Remember, Fix by Five saves lives. Let me just go out of turn a little bit. So can you, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, how many attendees you have and where they were from and how people approached listening to the uh, conference? Yeah, sure. So we had 114 attendees. They came from all over the country. And we also had folks from Australia, uh, several European countries, including the Netherlands. We had a, a very vocal crowd from Canada. <laughs> Um, and that was exciting in the, the question box. I was moderating the questions much of the weekend. So I got to get to know a lot of folks really well. And, uh, it was great to, to see and hear from them and hear about the challenges that they face up in Canada. Uh, a lot of people who registered, uh, used their registration in a variety of different ways. So the San Francisco SPCA, which Laura Mullen is from the San Francisco SPCA and she presented on Ringworm, they had the whole conference streaming all weekend long in their community room and they had snacks and drinks and staff and volunteers could come and go as they please to check out the different webinars. And so that was an interesting way that they uh, approached using that conference as a way to bring community within their own organization. So they were very supportive of it. A lot of grassroots organizations got together in, you know, folks' living rooms and that kind of thing and watched it as groups. And then other people in some of the follow-up surveys said that they couldn't check the alone box because they were watching with their cats. And so they they couldn't put that they were actually like alone. Uh, So I have to add a new category next year when I do the follow-up survey for like alone with pets or alone with cats. (laughs) Because some people had their dogs, too. When we asked for pictures, some folks sent in pictures of their dog being quite unimpressed with what we were talking about. So uh, we need to clarify the, the specifics of how people are actually absorbing the webinars. So, Kristen, those pictures came to you, I assume, and then you were the one who made them uh, visible? Yeah, yeah. No, I have a I have a template, a template that I was, that I was working off of. I built it a little bit earlier. And... Uh, and just kind of popping pictures in so that uh, that we could see see everybody because they were so cute. I I even got one in. Copper plate is in there. <laughs> um, he he was watching most of the time, um, but uh, but yeah, there's uh, there's there's a lot of ways that we can kind of prepare ahead of time so that if I want to do something or I want to change something or um, I can do that while the speakers are talking because um, I get to put myself on mute and, and ignore the questions some of the time. <laughs> so. Yeah, it uh, it's it's great to be able. I think what that does is it really creates a sense of community, and I think that that's something that the the animal welfare field as a whole needs. Um, you know, you, you can't be doing it alone. Like you have to know that there's other people out there, and that other people care, and it's not you know a fruitless effort. <laughs> so, um, I think that I think that making sure everybody else knows that there's other people sitting there watching with their cats. Um, it, it, it's not a lonely thing there. You're all together. You're just apart. <laughs> That's just terrific. Yeah. Stacy. Yeah. Ha- uh, Kristen, you happy with the results? Um, any thoughts about things you might do differently next time? Kristen, I'll let you go first. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I know that there's some features that we wanted to add in um, in terms of the go to webinar. We want to be able to have people chat with each other because there was a lot of uh, insight that came from different people in different parts of the country about specific questions that people were asking. Um, they had suggestions, so we want to be able to make that possible for everybody to be able to see and uh, chat back and forth. Uh, Question is, how do we keep that from being distracting from the speaker? But I'm sure we'll figure that out. We got we got some time. And next year, I want to make sure we've got uh, a little more capability with the videos, because it seems like, for the most part, people didn't want to show a lot of videos, but there were some that, that did, and uh, we weren't able to to do that. So I would like to, um, I'd like to be able to to clear that up and, uh, more trivia and more participation, I think is, is kind of my, my big thing. I want to see everybody be able to, to have feedback and have, have a, have a chance to put their two cents in. (laughs) 
How about you, Stacey? Yeah, so I, I was very happy with how the conference went off and the, the comments have all been great. I would put a shout out to the Community Cats podcast community as well as those folks that attended the online conference. You know, at this point in time, we are collecting as many ideas and suggestions as possible. And, and a big thank you to those of you that did fill out the follow-up survey. But we just would like any suggestions. Right now, we're, we're crafting our ideas for next year. And so please do um, send me at Stacy at communitycatspodcast.com any ideas, suggestions, ideas for speakers next year. Um, you know, we'll be starting to work on that, lining folks up for, for next year. I have ideas, but I would like to know your ideas if, if you have any thoughts on who we should get. If you know of folks that are interested in, uh, signing up for the online cat conference next year, just go to the website, onlinecatconference.com. If somebody missed the cat conference in 2018 and they want access to the presentations, they'll also be able to get that information there too. So lots of good stuff, lots of good energy. I um, want to continue with it. We do plan to have it again the last weekend in January. We thought that timing worked out well. So it's going to be the same time next year, same time, same place. And um, I really hope that everybody comes back and joins us again. Maybe we'll start tracking people. So we'll have like, you know, five-year prizes, 10-year prizes, maybe something <laughs> like that. I can already <laughs> see it happening and taking shape. But, uh, you know, any any ideas, thoughts, uh, ways we can improve, you know, this is for you. This is to help you. So please don't be shy. So I was I was going to ask you about plans for next year, but uh, the cat is already out of the bag there. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're already uh, shooting for in January is great because an online conference if you're in the Northeast and you're, you know, stuck and the weather's kind of and you don't want to go out and there's nothing better to do than sit and listen to lots of great information about cats. Yeah. It's, it's the kind of, go ahead, Kristen. Oh, I was going to say it's the kind kind of conference you can attend in your pajamas. That's a, that's kind of a beautiful thing. <laughs> We were talking about that when we were doing our dry runs. I was like, nobody knows what I have on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Except when we have to turn on the webcams towards the end. And I was like, oh, no, I haven't done my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All those little things you got to think about. Anything else you want to uh, share with the audience, uh, Stacy and Kristen? I just think this was, uh, you know, for, for a first time effort, I think it was a pretty amazing event. Yeah, I, I guess I would just say, you know, thank you for attending. Thank you for being patient um, and working through any technology issues that you did have. And it was awesome to have so many people there and participating. I would agree. I want to thank everybody who attended and supported the event. And I'd also like to thank the great lineup of speakers that we had because we wouldn't have had a conference without them. They were very generous and gracious with their time and patient with us and working through our technology um, and our practice, our dry runs and time zone issues. You know, we, we were dealing with Beijing and Australia and, you know, Hawaii and California and Mexico City. So we had all these different time zone things going on, too. So I just would like to thank the uh, pre presenters for really spending a lot of time being very thoughtful in their presentations, providing some great value. And uh, I really appreciate them taking the chance on this conference, too, because like I said, you know, it could have been just Kristen, me, Lisa and Julie Jacobson, <laughs> and they would have been presenting to the four of us. And it's a lot of work. It's not easy to put together a presentation. So a big shout out to the presenters because they're the ones who make the conference. Absolutely. And they well, were fantastic. You. Yep. Thank you both. Uh, nice um, hearing about this um, this first time event, and we look forward. We're already, I'm looking forward to next year already. Thanks, you guys. Right, and don't forget www.onlinecatconference.com. Please share it with your friends and get them to sign up for the uh, for the newsletter, and we keep everybody updated on uh, new developments for 2019. Fantastic. <laughs> Hi all, Stacy here. I just wanted to add on a little PS to our Ask Stacy show. I wanted to update folks on a couple of interesting things that happened as a result of the conference. I wanted to read a note that I got in about a kitty named Taco. 
So here it is. The colony caretaker had reached out to us about a friendly that had joined their colony and wasn't doing well. The caretaker wanted help finding the cat a home and getting him ready for that home. The next day was the online cat conference. I attended the lost and found workshop and realized I needed to treat the cat as lost to start with. Originally, we thought the cat was female, but soon realized he was most likely a neutered male after finding an N tattooed in his ear. We took the cat to our vet where they scanned him and were excited to find a chip. They called the chip company for us, and we were even more excited to find he had a person attached to the chip. Soon, they were leaving a message for the person who lived four city blocks away from the colony site where the cat, who apparently was named Taco, had been living for months. Fifteen minutes later, we were on the phone with the owner who was overjoyed to hear we had located Taco. Apparently, he'd got out one night when the mother had come home late, and they had been searching for him since October. The owner picked Taco up from us this evening after having scheduled a checkup with our vet to make sure Taco was okay after his long adventure. I honestly think I would have moved straight to the Forever Home search without the information from the Lost and Found workshop. Thank you so much for creating a platform that allows so many people to learn best practices. I'm sure there are many other cats out there who were helped. So that's a great story. I'm so glad that Taco found his home, and I just thought I would share with you. And I want to say thanks to Sarah for sending that note in to us. I also forgot to mention some other people that were very critical in the success of this last online cat conference. I'd love to do a shout out to Sarah and RJ at the Purrington Post. They were instrumental in helping get the word out about the conference. And Arden Moore at Pet Life Radio, thank you to her for having me as a guest on her radio show. And I'd also like to thank Kate at the Purpose Group for helping with outreach and spreading the information around, as well as helping secure our sponsors and donations of raffle items or cat trivia items. And a shout out also to Jamie, my VA, for helping with all the social media posts and responding to various emails. So I uh, wouldn't have been able to do it without her help, too. So, and lastly, uh, shout out to all of the presenters, as well as to all of you who shared information about the online cat conference with your networks. We wouldn't have been able to put it on without all of your help. So if there's anybody that I have forgotten who shared about the conference in your own personal networks, I appreciate it. And thank you so very much. The more we spread the word around, the more we can do and, and help cats like Taco. So thanks so much, everybody. Can't wait to see you all next year. If you like the Community Cats podcast and would like to help promote Community Cats in your state, then we need you. We're looking for a couple of people from each state to be Community Cats ambassadors. What do you get by being an ambassador? You'll be mailed a promo kit of items to use to help promote the show at any event that you attend in your state. If you don't attend many events, hey, that's okay too. Do you have a network of people that love community cats? You can help with email and groups in your state to let them know about the CCP and offer them the benefit of community cat swag. The more we can spread the word about the show, the more we can do to help cats across the country. Please email Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, at communitycatspodcast.com if you'd like to represent your state. Thank you. Ah!